So we can have other more complicated types of rational equations. Well, they look more complicated, but the same rules still apply. They still do all the same things. They just look a little tougher. Uh, equals 12. So I've got 3 times the quantity of x plus 1 all over 2 equals 12. Uh, and so my goal is still to get 1x by itself on one side. And this is a rational equation because I've got a fraction here. Um, so I want to, this 2, I don't like it. So I want to get rid of it. Um, and so I see that if I multiply by 2, or sometimes it helps if we think of it as 2 over 1. I don't know if that makes it better for you. Right, because we can write 2 divided by 1 is the same thing as 2. It's just a different right, way to write 2. Um, so if I multiply by 2, what happens to my 2's here? Yeah, they cancel out. But if I multiply by 2 on this side, I have to multiply by 2 on the other side as well. So what happens? My 2's cancel out. And so I'm just left with 3 times x plus 1 equals, well, 12 times 2 is just... 24. And now this is just the same kind of equation that we were solving in the last section. So we have to get rid of these parentheses so we know we can use that distributive property of numbers and distribute the 3. So we get 3x plus 3 equals 24. Then we would have to, we're trying to get the x's by themselves, so we have to subtract this 3 here. So 3x plus 3, now we're going to minus 3 from both sides, right? and we're almost there, um, so we end up with just 3x equals 21, and then the last step would just be to, we have to get rid of this 3, so we're allowed to divide by whatever we want on both sides, so we choose 3, so 3 divided by 3 gives me 1, 1x is the same as x, so I'm just going to write x. And 21 divided by 3 is 7. And there we have it. Our answer is x equals 7. And of course, as usual, the last step is always to check. I'm going to leave that to you. It does work. So that is solving 3 times x plus 1 over 2 equals 12. We get 7.